Get it? I had the idea for this video for some time now. Ranting about things that bother me, it's the YouTuber way. I want to take this a step further though, and bear with me, I might be going against the grain just a tad. I'm gonna try and do something about the things that bother me. And by do something, I pretty much just mean rant some more, but constructively. So let's just... Jump right into it? Somewhere in the world, there's an eight-year-old who's a better guitarist than me. But that's not the pet peeve. It's people who are somehow demotivated by that. We live in a time where there are millions of creators on this platform releasing content daily, and a lot of it's really good. I mentioned this in another video you're free to check out. So we're more likely to see child protégés than ever before. Being demotivated by good musicians is a very bad habit. We should be going, wow, that's epic. I want to do that. I want to work hard and achieve those goals, and you can achieve those goals. Measure yourself not by the skill levels of other guitarists, but be inspired by them. It's simple, compare yourself to you from two weeks ago and ask yourself, am I better than that guy? If the answer is yes, you're growing. This leads me to pet peeve number two, the idea that music isn't hard work and therefore can't be a job. This problem has two sides. On the musician side, we should understand that growth is always possible and anyone can do the thing they want to do for a living if they dedicate the time and the effort towards that goal. Granted, all musicians don't have the same opportunities, but we all have different strengths as well that boost us in certain areas. Some musicians are better at rhythm, some have better pitch sensitivity. Play into your strengths and work through your weaknesses. Hard work has always bred good musicians. Practice, challenge yourself, find a riff that you can't play and ask yourself why is that? and work through those hurdles. That's the work side. Now the occupation side of it is a little different. Working with music isn't an unattainable goal. My advice is always networking. Get to know other musicians, jam. Go to shows even if you're not playing and meet the right people. <laughs> I know this part of the job can be frustrating, especially if you're an introvert by nature. And that's fine. Samurai guitarist said something really cool. You should see being an extrovert as a verb, something you consciously decide to do. It might tire you, but it's gonna help your career a lot. There will be time for rest. No one in a music career has made it on their own. No one. The other end of this coin is at the end of the consumer. Music is fun to listen to casually, but it takes a great amount of skill and years of practice to perform and produce music. Musicians deserve to get paid for what they do, and although, unfortunately, everyone doesn't attach the same monetary value to live performance, if there's an audience for something, it has value. That'll serve as a good segue to the next subject, and it's one that I've discussed before. It's diminishing genres that we're not fans of. I often hear some of my good friends who are accomplished musicians in their own right criticize, for example, pop music's simple chord structures. Forgetting that music production is hard and not something you wake up in the morning and are suddenly able to do. Or hating on certain more challenging genres like metal or progressive jazz because it's just noise. Everything is just noise that we've put in an order we vaguely like. I once met a woman who hated classical music because quote, the notes go too high. <laughs> Musicians work hard irrespective of what genre they're in. Next point! I remember having a conversation during a haircut somewhere after the time I had ended high school. You can probably tell how that's worked out. I was asked what I am doing with my life and I replied with a sparkle in my eye that I am a musician. And the hairdresser said, Oh, cool, so you want to be like, famous. <laughs> yeah, you kind of have to be, isn't that the point? Going on to say that she had never heard of a non-famous musician be successful. <coughs> Don't measure your success by how well known you are by mainstream media. Music is a much bigger industry than just the guy on stage in a stadium. You can probably tell by the fact this video probably has like 10 views that I'm not famous by any means. You're also not successful. Nice. <laughs> but I'm a working musician and I make a decent wage. Yeah, I'm not a millionaire, but I'm not dying of hunger neither. I guarantee that I could list 10 musicians on screen right now and depending on your interest, you will not have heard of many of them. 
and they are fine without you having heard of them. Your favorite musician? There are people who have never heard of them. Don't use the metric, I am a somebody to this amount of people because you're going to be disappointed. There's a great quote that I can't remember who said it and I'm gonna butcher it anyway. An artist finds his audience when he finds himself. Another kind of sad thing is that a really bad YouTube channels are almost always more successful than really good music channels making good content. But didn't you say that all art has value? Oh, yes, but also keep in mind that that value does not come from its artistic merit, rather from its audience. And platforms like YouTube and Instagram have given massive audiences to some pretty bad creators. I'm talking about zero effort content and relying on pretty dodgy practices to get ahead. There is a solution here, but it's not angrily yelling at the YouTube algorithm for making vlogging and live stream more successful than music, but instead understanding that success looks different in a music career or for a YouTube channel focused on music. Video creators did a really cool video about how monetization and subscriber count aren't always related and some of the things you can keep in mind when growing your audience that your audience will be different from another creator's audience especially if you have different genres your audience is smaller than that of shouty mcforest vlog because music expects more from its consumer and it's important to know who you want to consume your content next p tiktok if you don't know what it is don't look it up it's tiktok it's I don't really have a constructive solution for this. I, I, murder? Murder, probably. TikTok has done a lot for the meme community and maybe one day we'll look back at it with the fondness we look back at Vine, but just at the moment, a lot of what is coming out of the platform is just... And finally, the worst thing I've experienced as a musician, literally the first thing I wrote down when I had the idea for this video. You're at a gig, you're at the venue, you've set up your entire rig, sound and everything, you've prepared a repertoire to entertain the masses tonight. You haven't even finished your sound check and you get that. Hi, can you guys keep it down a little? Can you just, you know, just uh, keep it down a tad? <laughs> What? You're paying me. You asked me to be here. The faders on the mixer are almost all the way down. We can barely hear ourselves over the house music that you still haven't turned off. Now I get it. If I've been hired to be background music, I'm wallpaper. I am merely there to create the mood. I have succeeded if people don't really notice me but are having a good time. But for the music to enhance the mood, maybe it should be heard just a tad. What I like to do at those gigs is focus on the individuals who clearly show an appreciation for the musicians. Who come up to the bandstand near the end of the night and say that they really appreciated a song or really appreciated a specific musician in the band. For money is not fulfilling and sometimes I get it, a gig is just gonna be a gig. But look for the little things and if you're playing in a group, Play for each other. Feed off of each other's energy. It'll help motivate you through longer gigs. It can make an otherwise really challenging gig a lot easier. And after a while, you won't really have any bad gigs. I'm not really sure how long this video is gonna be after editing. I got pretty ranty. Sorry, not sorry. If you're still here, I'd like to know your music pet peeves and how you deal with them. Whether you're a performing musician or not, it really creates perspective to know what the rest of the community is feeling. A video I wanted to talk about is one by Davidas uh, called What is the Point of Live Music? It's great and I have had plenty of similar experiences. If you're a musician who does live gigs, it's worth the watch. It is a, a spicy meme. But Peter, we want to see more videos, but we don't know how to be informed of when they come out. What a coincidence. There, there are features on the app for exactly that reason. Hit subscribe and the accompanying bell thingy. It helps the channel grow and you'll be notified when I release new videos. Genuinely, thank you so much for everyone who's been watching these videos. I do love making them and I do look forward to making more. Mm, goodbye. Thank you. There we go. There you go. Don't know if that was worth it.